involved in behaviour change and how you can develop a behaviour change programme. And I'll also talk about the example of the Green Schools programme in Ireland as a, a really successful behaviour change programme. So when you're talking about sustainability, a lot of people always think of technology and how technology can kind of solve all of our problems. The reality is technology will only solve some of them and really it's about us and how we change our behaviour and how we use resources and how we become more efficient with the use of our resources and that's in a very personal level but also in a community level, how we come together to make change and to kind of step away from this unsustainable lifestyle that we're, we're living in. So when you look at behaviour change, um, it, it's quite a new science um, and it's often seen as a, um, a soft science that it's often easy to implement behaviour change where it's really actually a very hard thing to do because of the way we're, we're set uh, um, how we're, we're people who like to be individuals and how, to, how we like to live our, our lives and in a very different way often so it's, it's almost um, a behaviour change is referring to a, a modification or, or a transformation of how we live on a daily basis and a big one that we all know that's happening this month is Operation Transformation. It's a classic kind of let's get into a bit of behaviour change and uh, it's all around a very short period of time, six weeks, and tracking how people can change their behaviour in six weeks. And often they do, but the reality is, do they maintain that change into the future? And that's, that's really um, what a long-term behaviour change is about. And um, there's key stages. So first of all, if you're a smoker, you know the way you're smoking, you're, you're having 10 cigarettes or 20 cigarettes every day, and then suddenly you become aware that it's a problem, and you're thinking, okay, right, I'm gonna change. Um, and you contemplate change, and you might sit in it for a few weeks and say, yeah, I'm really gonna change, I'm gonna cut down on the 10 cigarettes. Um, but eventually you say, no, next Monday, I'm gonna go down to four cigarettes, so I'm preparing myself to change. And you're changing your mindset by even setting a target for yourself. Um, then you say, right, I'm going to put it into action. And then Monday comes and you're sitting there with your box of cigarettes and you're thinking, right, I'm going to just have one in the morning and then I'm going to have one at lunchtime, one in the afternoon and that's it or whatever. Um, and really the action part is really important because it gives you a sense of empowerment that you can suddenly think, I've set myself this goal and I ended up doing it. And by doing that, it's all about self-efficacy. It's about empowering yourself and it's about then being able to continue on with that action the next day and then the next day and the day after that. And as you keep doing the actions, you're continually empowering yourself into the future. And then you become a champion for cutting down on cigarettes and you say, do you know what? Six weeks ago I cut down on cigarettes. You can do it too if you follow this through. Now the, fo the hardest part is maintenance because as you know, January we're all off the booze and we're all trying to eat healthily and we all try and maybe do a bit of exercise. But after January, do we start slipping into the old ways? We do because that's what we are, creatures of habit. So maintenance and maintaining the change is really, really hard. And that's, um, that's the part that we as program managers and program developers, we try to think about. Um, so what are social norms? We're all kind of existing within a society where there are social norms. And they're accepted behaviours that an individual is expected to do when you're part of a group. For example, if a child goes into a classroom, they learn over time that they must put their hand up in the air. If they don't put their hand up in the air and they start shouting out the answers to everything, they're not part of the social norm that's happening in the class. Um, or if you go onto a plane and you suddenly start smoking, that's against the social norms that exist within that group who are traveling on that plane. Now, 20 years ago was a different issue, obviously. So, um, but norms can change over time, and behavior change can be involved in changing that norm. Because we also have a thing called social deviance. And social deviance is when somebody doesn't conform to the social norm or the group that they exist in. Um, you can see here the kids are smoking, you know, obviously their, their behavior is deviant and it's outside of what the social norm is for their group. However, social deviance can actually be a really good thing because it challenges some of the social norms that shouldn't be accepted. You know, if, um, 
as you can see here, the suffragettes, when they were looking for the vote, they were going against the social norm of their time where women were meant to be seen, possibly, and not necessarily heard. Um, and also, when you're talking about cycling, um, the social norm in Ireland is that it's illegal to cycle on a footpath in Ireland. Um, whereas if you live in, the Am in Amsterdam, obviously, they're actually asking you to cycle on the footpath because they're providing infrastructure for you to do so. Um, we in Green Schools really want to create behaviour change to change the social norms that are happening in Ireland at the moment, especially with, in relation to the sustainability agenda. For me, my job is all about trying to get children to walk and cycle to school more. And currently we're in a social norm where about 60% of children are driven to school every day. So when you're talking about cutting our carbon emissions in Ireland, the 20% of cars on a road every morning are actually bringing kids to school. So we want to be actively engaged in changing that. And the new social norm is what I want to see is kids walking and cycling. And that, that was a social norm that was accepted in the 1980s and the 1990s when we had 70% of children go to school on their own. We know what the benefits are. The benefits are to do with greater independence for children, health, reducing our carbon emissions. It, it's multitude benefits. So really engaging in behaviour change to, to change those social norms is important. Sorry. Um, so the approach that you can take is really clear. If you want to engage your people and you want to make them change their, their behaviour, you need to set out clear examples or objectives. You need to say, right, I want to uh, get 20% of people in my road picking up litter or uh, getting them walking to school. You need to be sensitive. So who are you talking to? Are you talking to an adult or are you talking to a child? And how do you talk to them? Do you talk to them with technical language or do you talk to them in a more simplified uh, language? But you can assess it yourself based on who the group are. Um, you don't want to tell the people what to do. You want to lead by example. And you want to offer them ideas and you want to offer them opportunities to train and to learn. And then you want to offer them opportunities to feel empowered and to, be, to actually improve, to feel the whole efficacy issue. Um, then you want the desired behaviour, show that it's normal. For example, I, that's me, that's a real picture of me. I have three children, when they started going to school, I couldn't drive them to school. Um, you know, I, I couldn't do that because that would be totally hypocritical. So I ended up getting a cargo bike and, um, you know, I have to stand by what I do and uh, luckily enough they're all scooting to school now because they're way too heavy for that cargo bike, that's for sure. But be in the right place at the right time. If people have problems, offer them the solutions or offer them the, so the opportunity to actually figure out the solutions themselves. You know, we're not all experts. Uh, people out there are experts and by bringing them together and offering them the chance to create solutions, well then, that's probably more likely to succeed. Um, and then obviously um, amplify your impacts, get together with other people who want to do it as well and support each other. Um, it's really important how you communicate your, your message because, um, for example, if you want to get more children cycling to school, um, you can use a message like this, and I see these type of messages in the newspaper a lot when they're talking about, you know, using statistics for health or, or anything to do with um, transport or energy use. Um, for example, did you know that only 2% of all children cycle to school? Do you know what that is? Alarm bells going off in parents' heads. They're saying, well, my child isn't going to be the 2%. You know, they don't want to be putting their child out there in, this, in a group that's somewhat socially deviant because they're not the 98% of children who don't cycle to school. So you have to be really careful about how you use your statistics and how you translate that into the message. Um, so the better message would be, did you know that 80% of children want to cycle to school? And suddenly you're thinking, oh yeah, well, well 80% must be great. Everybody wants to cycle to school. Well, then I'll let my child cycle to school. And that's similar in messages to do with health and also environment when you're talking about um, trying to maybe retrofit areas or trying to engage people in sustainability. Um, so now I'm just going to quickly look at the programme that I'm, I'm in, involved in managing. And it's, it's an international programme all to do with schools, essentially. You might have seen the green flag outside schools. You might have seen uh, children getting involved in kind of radical, kind of uh, not so radical, clearing up their local environment. But they're all champions and leaders. 
Um, so we're running in Ireland 21 years, and we've got over 3,700 schools getting involved. Um, we, we run something that's very basic. It's, it's a basic environmental management scheme, but the part of it that's really important is that the children and the school community get involved. So they have to do things like set an action plan, so they set their objectives. They have to constantly monitor what they do, so they want to cut down their energy by 20%. They actually have to monitor if they've reached that target, and then they have to get involved in telling the local community. It's very simple, but it seems to work. And I think the really important part that works is the action part, because it's all about empowering the people who, who are doing the action. They're all the themes that we do. Um, so it's quite comprehensive and we've built it up over time um, and it's, show, it's become quite sophisticated in schools. Children are now learning about massive, the massive issue of plastics in the environment um, and also about how our waste is being transported and, and um, sent to, to the developing world. Um, so it's become quite comprehensive. So essentially it's all about children, our future, and um, it's all about training people uh, to be better, more aware of, of what the opportunities and the issues are going to face them in the future and be, be aware of, uh, of what their individual actions can do uh, in, a, in a cumulative way. Um, and these are some of our savings. Uh, it's kind of hard to um, put them into a small infographic because it seems to be a case that we, we have been growing so, so much. But for example, we get children involved in different events, um, walk to school week, cycle to school week, we save so much water, we save um, different uh, amounts of energy, but a big one we were talking about lately is biodiversity and how we're trying to get more and more children aware of what biodiversity is. And as we all know that there's a massive issue with biodiversity loss internationally and nationally, so that's something that we're really proud of. So this is the theme of travel. We, um, it's all about getting kids uh, to look at their journey to school. Um, we encourage children to walk and cycle, and these are actually real children taking part in real green schools events. I didn't take them off like the internet or anything. Um, and this is what we essentially want to do to make every car park empty and to fill up every single car bike shed in Ireland. That's the school, that's the school that my children go to in Harold's Cross, and they are pretty amazing with getting children to walking and cycling. Um, we offer real educational workshops um, and children just love the experiential um, workshops that we offer. It's all about learning skills, fixing their bike, getting involved. Um, and we also run weekly initiatives. What we found with uh, behavior change is really, if people can't change their behavior five days a week or seven days a week, they might try it one day a week. So give them the opportunity to try it one day a week, and it's not so scary. So if you change it on a Wednesday, you're more likely to say, oh, I might do that again tomorrow. Um, but if you give them the pressure to do it every day, they're just going to back off and say, no, I'm not interested. So these kind of one day events are brilliant, and they're a real kind of way of engaging with people. So if you are getting involved in behavior change, think about the small little one day events, the, the celebratory events, the fun events, because that's what sticks in people's memories, and they're more likely to do it again. Um, we do brilliant things like National Walk to School Week. We get 40,000 children walking every week uh, for that. And we do big critical cycle uh, bike rides throughout the country. Um, we also fund kids to do cycle training. We've fund 20, 22,000 already. Um, and we also part fund cycle parking. And uh, we really are, are really involved in making sure that there's infrastructure. We train parents and teachers. Most people, uh, parents, mothers, have not been on a bike for about 20 years and we're trying to reverse that. They're the ones who normally uh, look after how their children get to school, so it's really critical that we train them. Um, we do scooter training, really, really great fun, but more kids are coming at it as it's the fastest way to get to school often. Um, and we do other events, bike buffet, you can find out all about it, cycle to surf. Who would not want to actually get on your bike, cycle to the beach and do a surf lesson? as part of school. I mean, it's so much better than sitting in double biology, personally, I think, anyway. And finally, um, we're all about monitoring what we do 
um, and that's what we're always our surveys um, and these are some of our results what we found is if you don't put in infrastructure you're not going to support behavior change and it's fundamental to change the environment around the place you live and um, if you want to get people to change long term and what we have done is we have looked at we've established things called the walkability audit we look at pedestrian areas around schools and we've worked with local authorities to make to change the environment around the school because we mean business we want to retrofit our cities and our towns to make people a more better able to walk or cycle to school there's no point in talking about carbon neutral ireland if nobody can travel from their housing estate to their school or their shop or their work because there is no footpath it's just not on but anyway that's what we've done if you want to get involved or if you're interested in finding out more about us and um, there are all the different national um, projects that we run we also run green campus which means that children in primary school secondary school have gone into university and they have actually created the green campus program in university and trinity and ucc are now involved so um, it really shows that long-term behavior change works and the green schools program is one of those programs thank you